following podcast was recorded on Wednesday, March 8, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading. Joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim discusses the problem with surveys. But Jim, before we get started, it's tournament time. And I know you're a big Marquette fan. Do you have any thoughts on uh, their chances in the tournament? Yes, my Marquette <laughs> Golden Eagles are ranked sixth in the nation, the highest ranking since 1978. So when inflation goes up, they do well. Um, <laughs> I'm really hoping that uh, this is going to be a Final Four run for this team, and I'll be crushed if they're not. All right. Well, stay tuned. Uh, we wish them good luck. And yes, as we get back to business, Today, many government statistics are collected via surveys. As with political polls, the public is souring on answering them. The result is a lower response rate and large error rates. So Jim, how are payrolls collected? So we go to the first uh, table here, and I think it's important to understand that how this is done. Uh, it shows you a breakdown of how it is collected, what various me measures that they use. Um, computer assisted telephone interviews, that's where they actually call the companies and ask them what, where, what their payroll information is. And again, they ask metadata. What I mean by that is how many people do you employ um, in various categories, men, women, you know, and, and uh, minorities and the like. They don't ask what are their names, what are their social security numbers, how much do they make? They don't, that's what I mean by that they only ask metadata. The biggest uh, way that they collect the data now is through electronic data exchange. Companies will agree to have their payroll processing firm, like an ADP, basically deliver that metadata directly to the uh, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics when the data is available. They collect <coughs> data from about 167,000 firms. All told, it is about one third of the workforce that they collect the data from. So what's happening to response rates? So if we go to the next chart here, they do give you an, an answer of, of, of the, all of the firms that they ask uh, for the data, what are the response rates that they get? The blue line is the first response rate. Now that's the data point that we're gonna get Friday in the payroll report. It has been falling. It had been up you know, about 10 years ago, somewhere near around 80% on a response rate, but it is now down at a decade plus low, down at around 65%. Then those companies that didn't report before the 13th of the month, so that would have been the week of February 13th for this week's payroll report, they can report after that and it gets put into the first re uh, revision of the data in the next month, that jumps to 90%, and then the third and final revision jumps to 94%. So what you're seeing here is the amount of people that are uh, participating in these surveys is falling. And so you have a 25% or roughly bigger sample size for the first revision. Now, if we go to the second chart or the next chart, excuse me, this one shows you the sample sizes for other surveys other than the payroll report. CPI is a survey. Uh, the other big one that came out the day we're recording is the job openings and labor turnover survey. That's down at around a 30% response rate. <clears throat> now, so what's happening is all of the response rates that the government is using for their surveys is falling. Why is it falling? Uh, nobody knows for sure, but the best guess is it's part of the reason that people don't answer political surveys. They think sur surveys have been poisoned. They think they're biased. They think that they're maybe a sales call. They think that their information might be using in a way that they're not comfortable with, and they're opting out of, for whatever reason, or all of the above, from using these surveys. Now, in the case of payrolls, there is a potential fix for this. Every one of us that has a job 
has to report, has to have our payroll withheld. And virtually every company now uses a payroll processing service and that reports then the withholdings to the IRS. The Bureau of Labor Statistics can connect to the IRS database and get nearly 100% of the population's withholding data. Now that I've said that, that we're in the private sector, right? This is an antiquated system at the BLS, doing an antiquated system at the IRS, connecting those two antiquated systems together, using the bureaucracy of the government. It's, you're, you're asking too much. So they stick with the way that they've been doing the, survey, the, doing the payroll report since the end of World War II yeah. by a survey. Now, up until 1983, I might add, the survey was completely mail in up until 1983. And then they started introducing technology to it. And now, like I said earlier, 52% is just uh, automatically sent via um, electronic data exchange. But it's the same thing. It's just doing it with a little bit more smoother technology than it is, you know, it's using a touch tone phone rather a rotary phone rather than mail. But it's not that you fundamentally are saying, look, all that data is over at the IRS. Why don't we just get the data from them? That's asking too much, I guess, of the government to do it that way. What does it mean for understanding the economy? So if we look at the final chart here, this gets back to that first release, second release. So what the top panel shows is the difference, the revisions in the index. So you get the payroll report, 517,000 in January. As everybody knows, that was the big shocker. Well, on Friday, we'll get a revision to that. Will it be higher or lower by how much? And so that shows you all the revisions. And you could see that in the last couple of years, as the surveys have been falling, the revisions have been getting rather large. <clears throat> the bottom blue line shows you the absolute rolling 12-month deviation in the first release of the survey. That's been jumping. Now, it's been falling a little bit, but it's still way higher than it's been, say, pre-pandemic. So what we're seeing is we're seeing bigger and bigger revisions in the data. So the government puts out a report, everybody comments on the report, the market assumes that this report is correct, Federal Reserve policy is changed because of it, 517,000 jobs is what the last number we got, and now all of a sudden we're pricing in more rate hikes, everybody gets comfortable with it, Jay Powell goes out the week we're reporting, gives testimony that says, yeah, data stronger than we thought, and we're gonna to have to adjust accordingly. And then we wait for Friday to see if all of that was a mirage, that the revisions actually take that away. Now, maybe they don't, but we're more susceptible to revisions than we've ever been. And so the takeaway here is whether it's CPI or the JOLTS report or the, or the um, payroll report, these are all done by survey. And the surveys are seeing falling participation rates. They're seeing bigger revisions. You saw with CPI at the end of last year, they did the revision, the seasonal adjustments and revisions to CPI. And all of a sudden they, they showed that in the second half of the year, CPI was a little bit stronger than everybody thought. And so we should understand that this is the way the government does it. And it's getting worse because of the falling participation rates, not getting better. Now, eventually they get it right because they get their participation rates up to 100%, but it takes several months. And in the meantime, we're trying to real time assess the economy and assess Fed policy. And we're using first or maybe set first revision data. And that data is getting changed more and more as we go forward from here because of these falling participation rates. Well, Jim, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions, you can contact us by emailing Gus Hamler at gus.hamler at arborresearch.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.